let us just dive into the, um, the Word of God for today. You know, it's like a treasure hunt. You know, don't just sit there and let's see what you can, you know, convince me. Or, because we've got we to gotta be, the, you know, a person who is really actively searching for what, is there anything that the uh, Spirit of the Lord wanted to communicate to me through His Word? Okay, and um, today's message is about faith and a good conscience, okay? And uh, I've been a a follower of Christ about 36 years and uh, and still counting. And when I started my journey with the Lord, when I look back, there are many of us, you know, many of my friends from the church and the schools you know, declare that we are Christians and, you know, living for Christ and so on. But over the years, and I could see some of them, you know, uh, uh, stuck in a weird place in their life, especially their relationship with the Lord, or they just, some of them completely lost their, whether their faith, I don't know what happened to them, you know. And many of them uh, end up in a weird place. And, uh, yeah, still some of them are uh, working for the Lord, trusting the Lord, and carrying it on. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have something similar, too, that your early days of following Christ and the people who used to be the follower of the Lord, and then one thing happened and another thing happened, and they may be, end up in a uh, weird place. And uh, we want to see... What actually contribute, you know, what is the, some of the uh, most challenging issue for newborn Christian, you know, for the church, especially in the early church. And one of the, um, uh, one of the main uh, struggle of those early church is that the, the issue of so many false doctrines and wrong teachings. So it is nothing new from the day one of Christianity. Always there are so many weird uh, uh, theories and conspiracies and ideas people came up with against the sound doctrine. So we're going to look at uh, some of the um, uh, scriptures in uh, 1 Timothy and chapter 1. This is the very beginning of the book, and often you can discover what is the main purpose of each book. Uh, Sometimes you can find it in the very beginning of the book, you know, very beginning of the letter. And here's Apostle Paul uh, uh, writing this letter to his spiritual son, you know, uh, Timothy. And let's read. I'll read and uh, verse three. As I urge you, and when I went to Macedonia, and remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies and which cause uh, uh, disputes rather than godly edification and which is in faith. Okay? So uh, I want to pause right there and see. And I can sense that, uh, you know, the decision that was made for Timothy to stay and this church uh, of uh, Ephesus wasn't maybe his favorite, you know, a thing. He, he wanted to tag along. He wanted to follow his spiritual mentor and leader, Apostle Paul, when he was going to Macedonia. But there's a need in the church in Ephesus that the someone has to sort out the problem. What is the problem of the church? One of the main things is that in the church, some of the people they were teaching stuff that are not uh, a good. What, were, what they were teaching, you know, just uh, the other doctrine, doctrine that has no basis, doctrine that has no proper biblical root, you know, and no give heed to uh, fables. You know, what is the fable? It's, uh, uh, today's translation will be, uh, the, uh, the, another translation will be fiction. Or the myth, okay? Because some people, this is not happening in the city of, of uh, Ephesus only. It was happening inside of the church. 
So some of the people, they pay more attention to fictions and the myth and the endless genealogy, which is more for the uh, uh, Jewish people, and also uh, and, um, all these conspiracies and all these stories, maybe, maybe not true, and all sorts of things. And not only they are p- uh, paying attention to those stuff, but they actually wanted to influence others by teaching uh, things. And it was not an easy job as a young man, Timothy, to sort out that sort of thing was a very challenging thing. But Paul had, you know, uh, uh, faith and trust that, you know what, Timothy, even though you're young, you may consider yourself inexperienced. I think you can fix this problem. And that's why I urge you to remain in Ephesus to sort out this, you know, bit of a spiritual mess, okay? And um, so verse 5, now the purpose of the commandment is love, okay? From a pure heart and from a, a good conscience and, fr- uh, and from sincere faith from which some uh, have been strayed and have turned aside to idle talk. Uh, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things uh, which they affirm. Okay? So it's like they have no idea what they try to teach because they don't even understand what they are saying and uh, they don't know how to make, you know, how to affirm things. So these are the situation from the very first, you know, early church to 2,000 years later and it's still... And there are people that have a tendency of listening to, rather than the, uh, the sound doctrine, proper teaching of the word, they will look for any, any story that is fascinating, any story that's really, wow, that's interesting. You know, it's, uh, and that's the um, a problem. And Paul wanted Timothy to sort that out. And then how do you measure that uh, uh, something is solid doctrine, and how do we know that somebody is to be trusted? Is uh, here, Paul, he said that now the purpose of the commandment is love, not but that love is from a pure heart, good con- uh, conscience, and the sincere faith. So these three things are the measuring sticks that you need to check. This morning, you know, we got to check ourselves. People do all sorts of things. Different people teach all kinds of things. And uh, the, one of the first thing I want to talk about a faith is that the, how do you know that whatever your beliefs, whatever things that you hold as a faith matter, it's something really from God? How do you know that whatever you believe in your heart is actually truthful actually it is from God you have a way to prove it what is the reference point and what is the source of your faith is your faith based on some youtuber saying uh, interesting uh, theories is your faith based on the written word of God and you have done careful examination reading and uh, in, uh, thinking, asking, checking up that you convince that what you believe according to the word of God is the true uh, material. Otherwise, you know, you may have a very fascinating, interesting theories and ideas, but if it is just the rooted in a fables like fictions and the myth and, uh, uh, or some other uh, things that is not from the uh, written word, it will only produce, uh, uh, it will only produce uh, disputes and uh, dissensions and all sorts of problems. So we got to have this thing. Basically, I want to ask you, I want to ask yourself, do I know what do I believe as a believer? Do you know the content of your faith? If you don't, and you need to 
uh, uh, learn properly. Build your faith based on the proper foundation. That is the written word of God. You know, all scripture is God breathed, and it is good, and it is profitable for doctrine, sound doctrine. Okay, and it using the word of God, it will make us complete as a man and woman of God. Okay, so you need to ask yourself, do I even have a proper foundation to know who I am in Christ Jesus based on the word of God or whatever your idea of yourself and salvation and life, it is very much based on some ideas on uh, uh, someone else's explanation and so on. Okay, well, this is nothing new. It was happening in the uh, um, uh, Ephesus with the uh, uh, Paul's and uh, Timothy's uh, ministry. And also, another important thing is the uh, conscience, you know? Do you have conscience? Like, well, what kind of question is that? When do you feel the conscience? Your conscience acting. Okay. Uh, what is that yellow light means when you are driving? For those of you who know how to drive. You know, it's interesting. Some people see yellow light as, a, you know, watch out and stop. But some cultures see it as, you better hurry up. Which side is it? How does that your conscience interpret this yellow light means. You know, so, uh, sometime my lovely wife remind me that yellow light means that you better be careful and stop. So, yeah, perhaps I have uh, just uh, sometimes just see yellow light as that, oh, I better hurry up. And I say, it may not be that, okay? So the conscience is the one that it actually pokes you when you are just about to or whether you cross the line of something that you believe, right? And um, that conscience can be different from uh, one culture to another. Like the uh, book of Romans, there's the same Christians, but some of them have different conscience than others. Like Jewish Christians, you know, when they are having, you know, uh, shared lunch or something, and when they are eating some stuff, Jewish people, when they see pork, like bacon sort of things, and what would they, how would they feel? It's, uh, yeah, that's not my favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip that. You know, their conscience, even though they may know in their head, and, you know, uh, Jesus had his, uh, set us free from all this whatever bondage and so on, but that's their culture. Uh, not, 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 not good, you know. I'm not going to eat that. And the Romans, you know what? It's their favorite meat is the pork. So, they actually begin to point fingers at each other. So, uh, a Gentile believers saying that you have such a weak faith that you cannot handle this pork. And, uh, and say, no, you know what? We still believe in the Old Testament Bible and this and that. So they are pointing fingers and, and said, and said, enough. And Paul says, you know, we may have different conscience and different cultural background. And based on that, our conscience may work differently. But, uh, you know, we have a, a bigger issue. That issue is the love. You know, care for different conscience, different uh, things. And the uh, same thing, it's like a dashboard of your car, that uh, your conscience has a very important role in when you are convinced of the certain things of God from the Word of God. You equip your conscience with all of those words. But what good is your uh, life if your conscience is not working? You know, if your conscience is broken, you know in your head and what is the will of God, what is the word of God says about certain things in life. But you have this habit of ignoring your conscience speaking. You know what, Jason, you shouldn't have done that and you shouldn't have said that because the word of God this and that. But it's, uh, it's painful, you know, your conscience keep remind, reminding of things, so you may turn the switch off. I'm not going to listen to that. And you feel comfortable, but what happens is like that when you see in your car dashboard and this, you know, red symbol of engine thing. You know, when I was a young man and uh, driving this car, and I thought it's just, um, 
you know, only thing that I need to pay attention to is that the, when the, the fuel gauge, you know, the red light, then I need to fill up the uh, fuel. But one day I see this dashboard as uh, and, uh, the, the shape that I never seen before. It's at the red uh, a symbol of engine looking in. It's like, well, you know, I check the uh, uh, bottom of the uh, car. Uh, there's no sign of leaking of engine oil. I thought, well, maybe uh, it's broken. So I just ignore and, and drive around. And without knowing that engine has an issue of just the burning the uh, engine oil without leaking inside. So there was a, a almost no engine oil. But I have ignored that warning thing. And some people, if you ignore long enough that warning sign that's from your conscience, you know what? It can be completely broken. You become blind to that warning that your conscience tried to speak to you. You know, so it is really important that you have a good conscience. Usually it involves with the two things. The person's heart is honest. When you see something is blinking in your spirit, in your heart, in your conscience, at least you got to admit and pay attention to it. But if you ignore, pretend that you didn't see. And also you need to have this humility to be able to admit. So I'm not going to go on too much of that, but you need to understand the uh, a function of conscience is a very important. And also the pure heart, which is also, I will just uh, tie it up with the conscience, but it is checking what the motive why you do what you do. Like Judas, his conscience was seared. And how do we know? Because he was stealing money from the, uh, uh, the offering things for the Jesus ministry and so on. So when he sees this you know, woman you know, uh, uh, breaking the very expensive you know, uh, fragrance jar and pouring at the uh, uh, feet of the Jesus and so on, and he said, well, this is what a waste. You know, we could have helped out so many poor people with this. It is, you know, Bible explained the motive of his heart. And it sounds very noble. It sounds very spiritual. But his heart, because he was a thief, he used to steal money. And you see this, wow, I, that could have been, you know, a, my own possession. You see, that he was keep violating these conscience that he had, and uh, he become uh, 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 like seared conscience. The conscience doesn't work anymore. Okay, so you gotta check the motive of your heart. You gotta. We need to be able to check the motive of people, and uh, so it's a pure love that comes from all this uh, uh, sort of things. And uh, let's see, yeah, verse eighteen. This charge I command to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies and uh, previously made concerning you, that be them uh, 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 that by them you may wage the good warfare. Okay, so so we can guess there was a time that he received the prophecy about you know this young Timothy that he will be a a, a great uh, a, a man who will fight the good fight. Okay, so let's ask ourselves. So what sort of fight that would be? What sort of fight that uh, young Timothy were, uh, was supposed to fight? It is the fight against the, all the, against the, all these nonsense, fables, and lies, and deceptions of, uh, of the enemy. So I think it is still the same. What is the spiritual warfare? One of the main core of the spiritual warfare that you and I have faced is that this question, what is the truth? How do you know that something is truth? How do you determine that something is truth in your life, in your eternity? Do you put a poll on a Facebook? What do you think about this issue? So whatever the majority view that would you follow or whoever speak the loudest, how do you know, how do you discern and determine what is the truth? How do you know that something is truth? And how can you fight the good fight if you are not equipped 
with the truth of God. Remember the full armor of God? What is the only one, uh, that weapon that you can use against the enemy as a, you know, a weapon? It is the yeah, word of God. You know, that is the only thing that we can fight against the uh, uh, enemy. And that is the truth of God. You know, that is the written word of God. It is applied in different circumstances. That it become a rhema word of God. And you can declare the truth of God. And that's how you can fight. So young pastor, young Timothy, he is challenged to face all these people believing all kinds of different things based on whatever they've been uh, 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 hearing and whatever they've been convinced in their own heart. And uh, young Timothy had to, with the love and sincerity and uh, a pure heart, good conscience, but having a strong understanding of the Word of God, you know, correcting them, you know, uh, 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 rebuke them, and instruct them with the word of God. So that is the, um, the mission. That is the role. And he was uh, quite challenged. I'm too young. You know, I'm in- inexperienced. I'm not like you, Paul. But Paul reminded, you have a call of God on you. You have, there's a prophetic words uh, that was given to you. You better believe in God, not in yourself. You can do this, even without me. You can do this, young Timothy. Remember what you have been learned since you were young, which from your mother, from your even grandma, which is the word of God, and that will keep you straight. I want to ask you, what holds you, what holds your whole life together? If you don't have this good foundation of the word of God, you know what? You're like a, you know, a, 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 a little dinghy in a big, uh, raging uh, uh, waves and the strong storm. Unless you are solidly connected with the eternal word of God, these new fashions and the fables and idle talks of the world will push you one direction to another. It is a very, very, especially these days, and I feel bad for the young people because they are exposed to all kinds of crazy and weird ideas on the internet and stuff. But there's a not much solid message of the truth of God they can be accessed to. And uh, who's going to share the truth of God with the boldness, with the good conscience, and with the pure heart to these people who are looking for? It's like when you are uh, strained in the uh, uh, wide ocean and you ran out of fresh water. It's, you are on top of this mass body of water, but there's no water to drink. And we have a mission, you and I. We need to provide the truth of God that has been approved of the Word of God. Okay? And um, verse 19, and having faith and good conscience, and, uh, which some have rejected. So here's the a word again repeated. Faith and a good conscience. You know, you got to know the good content, what you know and what you believe. Based, where, where is the basis? It's based on the uh, eternal word of God. And you have a good conscience, honesty and humility. You know what? Then good. Then good. You will grow in the Lord. You will grow stronger. So you need to ask yourself. I need to ask myself. Am I growing in the area of truth of God and the uh, faith of God? And is my conscience still working? Is your conscience still working? It's a one thing that you know something, but it's another that you actually and put it into practice. This having a good, honest uh, uh, soul, this good conscience. But there are some people in the church in Ephesus, they have rejected this sound doctrine and good teaching and uh, honesty and humility, you know what happened? Uh, their faith, whatever they started off, and concerning their faith, have suffered shipwreck. Okay, what's shipwreck? It's like today's equivalent of air, airplane crash. Okay, how many people can survive airplane, you know, uh, 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 like crash?
crashed. A lot of people, you know, right? And in old days, this, uh, whatever the ship goes out for a voyage in the middle of wide open sea, when it's, you know, when it's wrecked, no greater swimmer can survive because uh, they don't have, you know, you know uh, these uh, life jackets and all this other device and uh, hardly anybody was going to come to save them. And it's, uh, it's a sure death. And uh, people uh, started their journey, you know, as a believer, as a follower of Christ of some kind, and then they rejected the sound doctrine for a long time. They have ignored the good conscience. What's going to happen? You lose your balance and you will uh, uh, sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. You know, that's a, a great analogy that Paul was using. And he's even uh, naming some in verse 20, and of whom uh, are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I deliver to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So uh, what does that mean, that the hand it over to Satan? Does that mean, you know, some, uh, in the uh, old days, some people misused this, uh, a scripture is saying that the yeah pastor or the pope and somebody has a power to send someone to Satan, which means see it as a, a send someone to a hell or something like that. But that n not really. When we see this word is that the, within the church and church fellowship is the where the reign of God and things are happening. So when somebody was kicked out of the fellowship, you know, excommunication from church will be considered handing over to Satan, you know, without the fellowship and, and Christ. So that's how uh, they were uh, considered. But this is not the permanent thing because there's somebody, this is not just someone who is uh, misguided. And this uh, Jimenez and Alexander, they were insisting, the teaching the wrong stuff without the approval, without the authorization of Paul, and possibly, you know, and those leaders, wherever were in the church. So they were constantly making a fuss of their uh, new ideas and things. And uh, to the point that their leadership had to kick them out. So that not to blaspheme anymore. Okay? So that's the um, idea of some of the people. It's possible that their fate can be shipwrecked. And uh, how do we... He prevented. How do we prevent that sort of event? Is that uh, make sure that your content of your faith is well connected to the scripture. Okay? You know, sound doctrine. Grow uh, uh, solidly. Okay? And, and you uh, make sure that you have a good conscience. You know how to apply into your life. You know, like sometimes we point fingers at someone else's a little, uh, a, a, a little uh, things in their eyes while there's uh, this plank in your eyes, right? That's not a good uh, way. It shows that the sometime our, uh, we can be super sensitive to other people and what is happening in their uh, lives, but we are completely blind and what is going on in our own lives, and that's the sign of someone who's not having a good conscience. Anyway, these two things are very important to float on the wide ocean of our journey of faith. So you ask yourself, do you know what you believe? And uh, where did it come from, your beliefs? Is it coming from the Word of God or some interesting idea somebody says once? Okay? And... Uh, uh, last scripture uh, for this morning is this. So what happened when somebody is uh, uh, well equipped with the word of God and, uh, and the faith and growing and uh, have a honesty and humility to apply to themselves and so on and good conscience is that the, you will be promoted. Uh, uh, to You will be given a responsibility to serve other people of God. Because serving others is a great privilege, you know. It's, it's not just a burden. And it shouldn't be just a given to anyone, just a willy-nilly. It is sincerely 
it, it, it tested and it should be given. But how do we know that someone uh, to be any a thing in the church? You know, in this case, it's uh, examples of uh, deacons in the church. And likewise, deacons must be reverent. You know, must be respectful among the um, uh, among the church. So these are the things that the first screening process, not double tongued. You know, you say one thing to this person, you say another to, a thing to others, just to appease others. You know what? You strike out. That's not going to work. You're not going to be as a, a, you know, someone who's serving other people in the church. And not giving too uh, much wine. You know what? If you are uh, addicted to any substance, in this case, like alcohol, you know what? You're not in a, a, a place of influence on others because you don't know how to uh, uh, conduct your own uh, self uh, from this addiction. And not greedy for money. That's huge things. And for example, deacons, they will mostly handle uh, church finance and so on. And uh, if you have so much love for the money, well, you're not going to be the person who's handling the money. Okay? So it's all making sense. And uh, uh, the second part is at the verse 9, and holding the mystery of the faith with pure conscience. Yeah, we see the word again, faith and conscience. That what kind of person that we can trust with any ministry, any work in the church, any work in the kingdom of God? What kind of person that God's going to promote in the uh, house of God and for the kingdom of God is that the one who knows that the mystery of the gospel, mystery of faith, they uh, it connect with the word of God and with the pure conscience. And um, so do we just give someone, anyone who shows their faith and uh, who shows that they have a good heart, pure motive, and so on, even with that and verse 10, but let these also must be tested. Then let them serve as deacons. This is the principle. You got to give a decent amount of time to test whether they actually practice what they say they believe. And when they practice their faith, do they have good conscience, no double standard? You know, do they have the, the courage to practice what they actually believe? Because often you know, Christians are accused of hypocrites. So in the church, we say and we act in one way, and outside of the church, and you drink and you party and you do everything like this, non-believers and uh, people think that uh, I don't see any difference in your lifestyle than all these uh, other people. I don't know what I need to be saved from, and I see you. And all those things, you know what? Those people are not yet to be trusted with the, any of the uh, important role of uh, serving in the body of Christ. Okay, these are simple, sensible uh, 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 instruction of Apostle Paul. And I want to apply that to all of us. How many of you actually have a desire? I don't want to just be a Christian who just, uh, 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 just uh, uh, warming up the seat, you know, uh, or once a uh, once a week. I don't want to be a person who is just doing same old, same old. Actually, I want to be able to serve others. I want to be able to teach and practice what I know. I want to influence on others. You know what? If anyone desires for the spiritual office, you know what? You are desiring for the novel of things. That's a great thing. But you got to ask yourself, do I have what it takes to have that? Which is do I have good, solid faith that has good links with the Word of God? And am I feeding myself? Am I growing in that area of sincere faith? And do I have a honesty and humility in my heart? You know, just apply that. And without that, you know what? It's not going to happen. We cannot, if the church make that mistake, just giving one important responsibility to this person and that person without, you know, a checking and give them a time to test them. It will be a disaster. And often that's why church got it into all kinds of, you know, weird uh, things. But we need to grow 
in our faith, in our good conscience, and make sure we keep our spiritual balance well so that we can journey all the way. So without shipwreck, and we get to the other end until the Lord's return. Amen? So I think, you know, this morning, and you know, I just uh, these repeated words, the faith and a good conscience, that I want you to close your eyes and this morning, because without that, even with the um, people who think they got everything together, we can lose our balance, we can tip over, we can have our faith to be shipwrecked. And your faith has to, faith comes from hearing and hearing coming from the word of Jesus. So everything that you believe, you got to test it, just like the Bereans. What I heard today, is that really biblical? Is that what the scripture uh, uh, teaches us? Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I don't know whether they actually, uh, scripture uh, uh, instruct us that way. And some of them may have this good faith and even doctrine and understanding, but they have this massive blind spot on their heart. They only apply to others, so they become very critical of other churches and other believers, other spiritual leaders, but none of the single thing they apply to themselves. You know, that's not going to be beneficial either. You got to be honest. You got to have a good conscience. God used that conscience to correct us, not to blame other people first. So this morning, I want to encourage you that is there anyone who has this desire, you know, Lord, I want to grow in the area of faith. Maybe some of you, it's been a long time that you have a hunger for the Word of God. And chew into the Word of God and reading and asking questions and growing in revelation. You know what? You need to grow in that area again. It's not for the first five years of your Christian journey. It is not for the ten years. It is our lifetime journey that we need to grow in our understanding of the mystery of the gospel and the uh, 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 Word of God. And also, we need to be sensitive. We need to remain in our conscience to be very much fresh. And it's just uh, humility and honesty. So I want you to close. uh, I want you to stand up in your place that anyone uh, would like to ask the Lord, Lord, I need to grow in our uh, uh, journey in the faith, that I need to grow in the area of sincere faith. I need to grow in the area of uh, uh, pure conscience. So that uh, I want to pray for you guys. All right? So... Uh, please stand up and I want to uh, pray for you. Father God, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. It is easy to it is easy to just uh, follow these fascinating stories on YouTube and on this place and this books and that books. But we know where the truth, where the gold nuggets really lies in. It is your written word, Lord. And without the help of the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand. So, Lord, we pray. First of all, I pray for those who uh, uh, has a spiritual hunger because they haven't really digging into the Word of God and chewing and chewing and chewing of your Word to become their real spiritual nourishment. So instead of digging in and chewing in the uh, 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 solid uh, uh, stuff, they just, their itching ears may uh, 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 toward the old sort of interesting stories of the world and help us Lord to root it in your word and also give us the uh, a fresh new anointing in our area of our uh, conscience that we will be honest and we'll be humble that before we point fingers at anyone and anything that we'll be able to look at our lives and examine and realize that Lord have mercy on me I'm a sinner before you, Lord. I need your grace. And without that, we cannot balance our journey in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time that you have reminded us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.